The Disabled Tyrant's Beloved Pet Fish Transmigration Chapter 137 When Li Yu woke up, his head was pounding non-stop and his thoughts were still swirling. When he settled himself and looked around, Wang Shi was still playing old eagle catching tiny chicks with the children and he wasn't actually talking to anyone. He must have been dreaming. However, this dream seemed very real. With Jing Wang's current status it wouldn't be a surprise if he became popular. The emperor had allowed Jing Wang to manage governmental affairs. From a certain point of view, this meant that he had acknowledged Jing Wang's position. The second prince, Marquis of An, who had almost become the crown prince, didn't even receive this kind of treatment from the emperor back then. The third prince, Marquis of Ping didn't even need to be mentioned. However, Jing Wang was not the same. He was the only son of the deceased empress who was still alive in this world. The muteness that gave him the most criticism from others had already been treated. He also made great contributions in saving the emperor. What reason did the emperor have for not picking him? If it were before, the officials might still hesitate to support Jing Wang, but now they could only follow the will of the emperor. Li Yu had once heard Wang Shi harping on about how impressive Jing Wang was right now. No need to mention anything else, at present, the emperor had already ordered Jing Wang to participate in political affairs. Every day after the morning court ended, the number of government officials waiting to walk the same path together with His Highness Jing Wang was endless. These officials had not attempted to get into Jing Wang's good graces before because the situation was complicated. They would be fools if they didn't attempt to do so now. However, Jing Wang firmly remembered the emperor's taboo and didn't actually interact with any of these people. Other than Zheng Jing from the Ministry of Works whom Jing Wang would occasionally exchange a few words. Because Jing Wang had once worked in the Ministry of Works and Zheng Jing was the person who assisted him back then, it's normal for the two of them to have a bit of a relationship. Meanwhile, if other people wanted to flatter him, Jing Wang only treated them with a cold face, not making it easy at all for them. When Wang Shi was expressing how impressive his master was in front of Li Yu, he was only praising at most and was not implying anything else at all. Jing Wang was busy with official government affairs. The important task of caring for Li Yu had fallen to Wang Gong Gong. Because Lu Yi was giving birth in human form, Jing Wang could comfortably tell Wang Shi about it, wanting Wang Shi to be extremely cautious and careful. The princess consort was pregnant again, Wang Shi was extremely elated deep inside. How could he dare to gossip about negative things in front of Li Yu? Were there ladies that wanted to marry Jing Wang and become his side concubine? There must be. And there must be a lot. However, Jing Wang himself had basically ignored them all and didn't think anything of it. Why would Wang Shi go talk about this himself? Nevertheless, Li Yu was sensitive due to his pregnancy and had subconsciously imagined the crisis himself. And the more he mulled over it, the more reasonable it felt. In ancient times, men usually had three wives and about four concubines. Although Li Yu felt pretty confident in Jing Wang, Jing Wang still had the emperor above him. What if some high official didn't manage to convince Jing Wang and turned around to beg the emperor? Then on a whim, the emperor threw Jing Wang a huge surprise. Then it would be rather hard to decline. Did Li Yu have to enact in person a dramatic script about a Karpiao tearing apart a Fox Yao soon? This couldn't be allowed. Hubby must only belong to him. Li Yu jumped up with a jolt. Usually when he woke up, he would snooze for a little more. Now he was not in the mood to continue sleeping. He got up and was just about to go find Jing Wang. Coincidentally, Jing Wang returned at this time to the estate with some imperial physicians in tow. These imperial physicians were all maternity experts appointed by the emperor. Li Yu usually didn't encounter them much and didn't recognize them immediately. The dream he had just now had already made his head confused. Therefore, 
he thought that these people came to pester Jingwang to marry their daughters. Flabbergasted, Li Yu said extremely sourly, you even brought these people back home. He thought Jingwang would definitely stand firm and say no, regardless of whether the other person was a matchmaking old man or a beautiful elegant noble lady, he'd still ignore them with no exceptions. However, just look at this. Jingwang had practically brought those people right in front of his face, right? There's a saying if men are reliable, then pigs can fly. Was this really true? Fishwife suddenly became infuriated and anguished. The dumbfounded Jingwang, who was completely unaware that anything had happened. Even though Jingwang was quite intelligent, he still didn't know where this fish's thoughts spun off to sometimes. However, Jingwang had some previous experiences. Normally when he didn't understand Xiao Yu's words, going along with it wouldn't go wrong. Moreover, the imperial physicians did come to assess Xiao Yu's health. Therefore, Jingwang nodded his head. Li Yu was instantly angered. He pointed a finger at Jing Wang's nose and asked sadly, then are you going to bring their daughters into the estate next? All the imperial physicians were speechless. The imperial physicians were all hit in the face with a huge pot. One of the imperial physicians said with trembling lips, Your Highness Princess Consort Jing, this old official's daughter is only three years old. Another imperial physician meekly said, your Highness Princess Consort Jing, this official's daughter is already a mother of three children. Li Yu. Li Yu suddenly realized that he had made a mistake. Looking carefully, he saw some of these high officials were carrying small medicine boxes. Oh. So, they were actually all imperial physicians. Because in this world, imperial physicians were also government officials and also had ranks, they wore the same government robes as civil officials. Li Yu had depended on first impressions and never considered that these people who had followed Jing Wang back to the estate might not necessarily be the family members of wannabe concubines but instead could be imperial physicians as well. With this, he really embarrassed himself all the way up to his grandma's generation. The best fish in the realm definitely couldn't acknowledge such an embarrassing thing. Li Yu took a deep breath and quickly changed his expression. He gave the imperial physicians a charming smile and held his wrist out voluntarily, you're all imperial physicians. Did you all come here perhaps to check this consort's pulse? The princess consort is correct, the mystified imperial physicians finally let out breaths of relief. Seeing Xiao Yu made an about face right before his eyes, Jing Wang immediately knew that this fish had misunderstood something. However, his health was more important. Jing Wang suppressed a smile and marked this on Fish's record first. He allowed the imperial physicians to assess his consort quickly. The imperial physicians were all focused on proper business. When Li Yu spouted a bunch of nonsense, the imperial physicians did not think much of it. Everyone said that pregnant people had unstable moods. The imperial physicians expressed that occasionally getting angry or yelling wasn't surprising either. There were even people who rained brutal curses down on their own husbands during labor, too. After the physicians finished their assessment, they all stated that the princess consort's health was very good and that he had been pregnant for three months. When these imperial physicians had heard that this male princess consort could give birth, they were all very curious. Now they could finally say that they've increased their knowledge of the world. This was definitely a pregnancy, no doubt about it. The imperial physician that was once sent to the west frontier also came this time. Last time, he had checked the pulse of the pregnant princess consort Jing through a curtain. It's already been a long time ago and this time, Li Yu stepped forth himself. This imperial physician didn't notice anything in the end and only focused on congratulating Jing Wang. After this physician had finished assessing, Jing Wang said to himself internally that the matter regarding the fish babies had finally come full circle. Jing Wang then asked the imperial physicians about some stuff that he should take note of and then sent these imperial physicians away, letting them return to report the good news to the emperor. After the outsiders all left, Jing Wang looked towards Li Yu with an ambiguous smile. 
Li Yu knew that this wasn't good and looked pitifully at the four fish babies, hoping that his sons could step forth and distract their father Jing Wang. However, three of the four fish sons were unfortunately all looking somewhere else. Only Si Bao received fish dad's pleading gaze. Si Bao, save me quickly. Li Yu mouthed to his son. Although Si Bao's reaction was a step slower, he could still tell that fish dad needed help. Si Bao bravely marched his little short legs and slowly walked over. Li Yu was delighted. Jing Wang normally doted on Si Bao the most. If Si Bao acted spoiled for a bit, things will definitely be fine. Li Yu attempted to cover up his mistake using his son. Jing Wang also had countermeasures. His eyes swiftly glanced towards Wang Shi. Wang Shi was originally arranging snacks and dessert for the little masters to eat. With a smile, he picked up Si Bao and said little master, this old servant will take you to get some peach blossom cookies and candy to eat, how's that sound? Although Si Bao didn't love to eat as much as Air Bao, he still couldn't resist the double enticement of peach blossom cookies and candy, especially since he had already played vigorously for a long time, his stomach had been hungry for quite a while. Si Bao could only blink his eyes and look apologetically towards Fish Dad. It's okay. Jing Wang Daddy will definitely help Fish Dad, Si Bao thought to himself. Then, little Si Bao left together with his big brothers and Wang Shi. Li Yu. This unreliable baby. Then you mm, was it too late to pretend to be drowsy? Li Yu yawned deliberately, pretending he wanted to return to the house to take a long nap. Perhaps after he woke up, Jing Wang would forget about how outrageous he had behaved earlier. However, Jing Wang had a very good memory and promptly stopped this fish. He dragged fish back and wrapped him up tightly. Now the fish princess consort could no longer fly away. With a smile, Jing Wang asked the person in his arms, Xiao Yu, tell me, who's entering the estate? Li Yu. Li Yu's refusal to acknowledge this matter was a complete failure. He could only explain what had happened in his dream. Although it was a dream, recalling it still made Fish very angry. Li Yu said indignantly, obviously those women who want to become your concubines. Jing Wang. Jing Wang coughed lightly. Dreams came from daily thoughts. He had already promised he wouldn't have any concubines previously. Unexpectedly, Xiao Yu was still worrying about this matter. You can rest assured. There's no one else. Jing Wang said softly. What side concubine? How could the spot of snoring by his side be taken by others? Jing Wang only knew one fish and that was enough. After learning Jing Wang's attitude towards this, Li Yu smiled so much his eyes curved into crescent moons. He still didn't forget to ask, what about imperial father-in-law? Father also wouldn't appoint me any concubine. Jing Wang cradled this vinegar-chugging fish and slowly told him something. Actually Li Yu's intuition was rather accurate regarding the current situation. The emperor really did ask Jing Wang about side concubines before. After all, in order to stabilize one's power, political marriage was one of the methods they could employ. However, Jing Wang refused vehemently. The emperor was only asking casually though. After receiving Jing Wang's opinion, he didn't force him. There were indeed high officials that had once begged the emperor, however, the result was not the same as what Li Yu had imagined. The emperor didn't actually want to issue marriage decrees for any of these officials especially with Jing Wang. There were many reasons for the emperor's refusal. One of which was, once upon a time, the emperor had spent quite some effort frustrating over Jing Wang's marriage. At that time, the families that looked good to him all used a variety of excuses to express how their daughters couldn't marry Jing Wang. The emperor understood very well that they were tactfully declining. But now that Jing Wang's muteness was cured and was currently placed in a good position, added to the fact that he was just about to become the crown prince, these people were starting to beg their grandfather, their grandmother, and all their ancestors, to have their daughter marry into the Jing estate. Now they have changed their arrogance to deference. The emperor's thoughts were pretty much the same as Wang Shi's. 
How dare those who had disdained his son previously attempt to fawn for his good graces now? It's too late. Moreover, Princess Consort Jing was a very good. The emperor didn't want to make things difficult for him unnecessarily. Moreover, the emperor himself was traumatized by Princess Lang Ya. What if he also ended up giving Jing Wang a villainous concubine? Spreading the bloodline and having offspring was a good excuse but to Jing Wang, this wasn't an issue at all. Of course, if Jing Wang himself expressed that he wanted a concubine, the emperor definitely wouldn't stop him. However, since Jing Wang expressed that he didn't want to, then the emperor wouldn't compel him. To those high officials who did attempt to go through the emperor, the emperor instantly replied with an energetic and refreshed tone, can't help you here. Even Zhen can't convince Jing Wang. This is father's thoughts on this matter. Jing Wang quietly explained the emperor's attitude. Li Yu's cheeks were flushed red, perhaps from embarrassment or perhaps from shame. It was he who had misunderstood the emperor. Actually the emperor was also human. Treat the emperor well and the emperor definitely wouldn't make things difficult for you. With this double guarantees, Li Yu's heart completely settled down. I'm sorry. I just lost a bit of control suddenly. Li Yu lowered his head and apologized. He also didn't know what happened. Lately, he keeps feeling a flame of anger blowing off in waves. His head keeps feeling fuzzy, like lard was covering over his heart. After calming down, he felt he was really outrageous and unreasonable. It's not your fault. The imperial physician said it already that it's normal to be extra sensitive during pregnancy. Jing Wang remembered the imperial physician's words and rubbed Li Yu on the head, expressing that he didn't mind at all. Moreover, it only shows how much you love me, Jing Wang said with a smile. Xiao Yu's personality was frank and straightforward. He rarely threw tempers. This was actually the first time he acted so capricious. Even if Xiao Yu pointed at him and cursed him out, he still liked the fish. Furthermore, if the two of them were getting along amiable and Xiao Yu suddenly brought a group of men back to the house, the consequences would have been much more serious. Li Yu was comforted by Jing Wang and he didn't need to go back to work for the emperor anymore for the rest of the day. With the hubby by his side, Li Yu's mood quickly became much better. On the other side, the imperial physicians that had assessed Li Yu reported all of their findings to the emperor. Princess Consort Jing was really pregnant. The emperor couldn't stop his mouth from curving upwards. He started flipping through the reports that Jing Wang had worked through again. He originally wanted to pick a good date to announce his imperial decree. Now, he didn't need to wait anymore. Picking a good date wasn't as good as bumping into a good date unexpectedly. Having two simultaneous happy events in the family, wouldn't that be even better? The emperor immediately ordered head steward Luo to summon the six ministers and princely of the first rank over. He wanted to officially propose making Jing Wang the crown prince in front of these important officials and head of the royal family. End chapter The Disabled Tyrant's Beloved Petfish Transmigration Chapter 138 Prince Li and the six ministers had pretty much guessed the emperor's decision already. They just never expected the emperor would settle the candidate for crown prince so quickly because in the last dozen and so years, the emperor never appointed a crown prince formally before. Even if he seemed to treat certain princes with special expectations, the emperor was more focused on grooming them and guarding against them. He wouldn't announce any decisions ahead of time. Prince Li and the ministers were all very satisfied with Jing Wang. They actually had no objections to the emperor appointing Jing Wang as the next ruler. However, as loyal subjects, they couldn't directly approve of this. A ruler's heart was hard to fathom. Prince Li and the ministers had to give token resistance before kneeling unanimously by chance and saying, Your Majesty is still young, please reconsider this carefully. The emperor smiled but didn't reply. Before he had also thought that he was still young. After what had happened in the palace, it made him realize that he had long lost his youth. In the face of Princess Lange's surprise attack, 
he actually couldn't exert any resistance at all. This was a disgrace and also something that couldn't be helped. Even though he had only been trapped for a short time, the opponent was too treacherous, impersonating someone that he had never imagined they would. After being detained and transported all over the place in such a wretched state, his old age had caught up with him. No matter how much he recuperated, his energy wouldn't be able to return to how it was before no matter even if he didn't want to acknowledge it. People in ancient times rarely lived past the age of 70. According to this method of calculation, most of his life was over already. Who knew how many years he had left in this mortal world? The truth about the deaths of Empress Yahweh and the fourth prince were also a huge blow to him. He had already been the emperor for a very long time but he was still powerless in certain matters. Power and influence couldn't bring back his deceased wife and son. Nor could it be exchanged for the passing of time. It was time to release the imperial power that he had grasped tightly in his hands for so long. Previously, he had tried and allowed Jing Wang to manage government affairs. He discovered that Jing Wang actually did well. The emperor was very satisfied and thought, since he had already decided on Jing Wang, why not just announce it early and release his power without regrets. He was in no mood to rule anyways. Having the crown prince take control was more official and legitimate. When Jing Wang ascended the throne in the future, the transition would be much smoother as well. The emperor only needed to ponder about this slightly and he was already looking ahead to the ascension of the next ruler. For a second, he was faintly stunned. However, making Jing Wang the future ruler was something that was bound to happen sooner or later. The emperor very quickly accepted it. Prince Li and the ministers beseeched him several times, but the emperor did not change his mind. Prince Li and the ministers finally expressed that they will do their best to support all of the emperor's decisions. In the following morning court session, the emperor ordered Prince Li of the first rank to read out the prepared imperial edict in front of all courtiers to formally declare Jing Wang as the crown prince. This time, the emperor did not give Jing Wang any advance warning. Jing Wang never expected that on this seemingly normal court session, he would be appointed as the crown prince and thus, it stunned him for a while. Under the constant urging of Prince Li of the first rank, he knelt down and accepted the imperial edict in front of all the officials. At this moment, many thought flashed through his mind. When he came back from his senses, he had just finished kowtowing to the emperor. In order to publicly show how much importance he placed in Jing Wang, the emperor proclaimed clear words of encouragement to the newly declared crown prince and ordered all of the ministers to help the crown prince in familiarizing himself with the functions of the various ministries and to assist the crown prince in handling court matters. The Ministry of Rights also received the imperial decree and immediately started preparing the coronation ceremony for the crown prince. After the court session ended, the emperor had the crown prince stay behind. Tian Chi, how do you feel? The emperor asked. When Mu Tian Chi had gone to the court this morning, everyone around still called him Your Highness Jing Wang. After the imperial decree was publicly announced, he became, His Highness the Crown Prince. This felt rather too sudden. However, he couldn't say this to the emperor. Therefore, he only nodded his head with complicated feelings. Do your best. The emperor patted him on the shoulder with a smile. Actually the emperor's stomach was filled with words. He just didn't know where to start. About this crown prince position. Regarding their father and son relationship that they had finally built after much difficulties. The emperor had heard that during the conflict with Princess Lang Ya, that De Bao had picked up his little slingshot and wanted to come save him. The emperor really felt comforted when he learned of what this young child had said and done but he was also somewhat baffled why this tiny child would show such bravery. Did he want the emperor to reward him? When he asked De Bao, De Bao himself couldn't explain it clearly but Li Yu said, Your Majesty is his grandfather. This should be expected. The emperor had seen all sorts of schemes in his life. 
he himself was used to doing things with ulterior motives but he forgot that there were also people in this world who would do something without expecting anything in return. Such as voluntarily doing things for one's family just like how Da Bao would try his best to save him simply because he was his grandfather. Da Bao was like this. Jing Wang was also the same. Although Jing Wang didn't mention it himself, the emperor was very much aware that if Jing Wang didn't save him that day and instead allowed him to be killed by Princess Lanja, no one would blame Jing Wang. Jing Wang might have directly ascended the throne by now. However, Jing Wang didn't forsake his emperor but he knew that this was also due to their father and son relationship. The emperor deliberated and then said something that he would have never said before. Tian Qi, if you don't disappoint Zhen, then Zhen will also not disappoint you. The crown prince never imagined that the emperor would trust him so absolutely. He also wanted to make an attempt and slowly nodded his head. Oh right, there's one more thing that I've been thinking about for a long time. The emperor kindly looked towards the crown prince. Since he was already the crown prince, the emperor felt like there was no need to beat around the bush and said what he was thinking directly. Back then you got married at the West Frontier. Zhen didn't manage to attend the wedding ceremony. Zhen still feel regretful about that. Therefore, Zhen is thinking that after your coronation ceremony, Zhen will organize another wedding ceremony for you and the Crown Princess Consort. Tian Qi, what do you think? Crown Prince. Jing Estate. Prompted by a sudden whim, Li Yu was teaching Da Bao how to write. Don't look at the fact that Da Bao was only a little older than a year. He already could recognize a lot of characters. The emperor had specifically appointed a teacher for Da Bao. Every day the teacher would assign Da Bao homework, wanting Da Bao to go home and practice writing. Although Da Bao was young, he was the most studious baby in the imperial study. He always completed whatever assignment the teacher gave. When the other fish babies returned from class, they would go to sleep after eating some snacks. After Da Bao napped a little, he would wake up himself and have Wang Shi carry him to the study to practice writing. Normally he had teachers to guide him. The emperor would often give him special attention. When his little soft hand grabbed the brush, he was already holding the brush in the proper way but the characters he wrote couldn't really be considered looking good. However, this fact didn't negatively impact Da Bao's love for learning. Li Yu originally was just passing by. He saw Da Bao with his little butt raised in the air while writing, little chubby face scrunched up seriously. For some reason, Li Yu thought about hubby with the same kind of expression and suppressed his laughter so hard his stomach hurt. Then after taking a glance at Da Bao's written characters, Li Yu really laughed out loud. Being laughed at by Fish Dad, Da Bao pursed his lips so much in a pout that they could be used to hang something. Da Bao, my good boy. Daddy will teach you. After Li Yu finished laughing at his son, he immediately tried to salvage the situation. He carefully recalled how Jing Wang had taught him to write back then and his heart filled with sweetness. Li Yu imitated Jing Wang and wrapped his hand around Da Bao's small soft hand, then started scribbling. As he wrote, he said, Da Bao can just follow along and write what daddy wrote. After casting all his worries aside about the subject of concubines, lately Li Yu felt much more carefree as he took care of himself and the unborn child's health. He also wrote very quickly. After writing on an entire page, he stopped to let Da Bao appreciate it. Da Bao was originally very much looking forward seeing to Li Yu's calligraphy. His father Jing Wang's calligraphy was highly praised by even the imperial tutor so Da Bao felt that Fish Dad's calligraphy shouldn't be that bad either. However, after Fish Dad guided him to write a page, Da Bao's dream was shattered. Fish Dad's calligraphy wasn't even as good as his. Da Bao, who felt like he'd been deceived, refused to have Fish Dad teach him how to write anymore. However, Fish Dad's hands were itchy and he was totally unaware. He still wanted to continue teaching Da Bao how to write. Da Bao ended up turning his body around and pointing his little butt at Fish Dad, determined to express his defiance. Li Yu, 
who suddenly discovered that he's been disdained by his son, eh? Fish's dictionary didn't contain the word disdain. Liu scoffed and tossed De Bao's brush aside as he got ready to lecture this fish baby who dared to disdain his own father. Realizing that things weren't going well, De Bao swiftly slid off the table, spread open his little short legs and got ready to run. Liu pounced over and forcibly picked De Bao up. Huffing hot air into his palms, he started to tickle De Bao. De Bao giggled and laughed loudly. The father and son were just having great fun when Wang Shi suddenly dashed over rapidly. Holding onto the door frame and taking a few huge inhales to catch his breath first, Wang Shi said ecstatically, Princess Consort, there's, there's great news the emperor has formally appointed his highness as the crown prince. Li Yu. No way, just like this. He thought that the emperor still wanted to wait a bit, at least one or two years or five years at most. The emperor was very concerned with power and position after all. Perhaps he might have wanted to test Jing Wang some more. Last time he made Jing Wang go to the west frontier, perhaps next time, it would have been the southern borders. Who would have imagined that the emperor would directly make him the crown prince? Well, recently the emperor had been having Jing Wang manage government affairs on his behalf. Li Yu had more or less understand the emperor's intentions then. In the novel, Jing Wang didn't actually become the crown prince. However, his hubby managed to do it. Although it didn't count as ascending the throne yet, it was already very close to that position. Li Yu's eyes felt somewhat wet but it was because of happiness for his husband. He was just thinking about how to celebrate once Jing Wang returned to the estate when Wang Shi said, since his highness had been appointed as the crown prince, your highness will be declared as the crown princess consort. The imperial decree should be arriving soon. The emperor also said that after the coronation ceremony, he wanted to personally set up a wedding ceremony for your highness and his highness. Li Yu Li Yu originally felt very happy but upon hearing these words, he immediately became terrified. No way. He already gave birth to four fish sons and also had a small sweetie pie in his stomach right now. Why did he still need to have another marriage ceremony? What did his highness say to this? Li Yu had hoped that hubby would decline. Getting married with a big stomach was a bit embarrassing. Moreover, they've technically consummated the marriage twice already. Not to mention, they already had a grand wedding. Having another one seemed a bit weird. His Highness, Wang Shi was just about to answer when he saw the main character entering the door from the corner of his eyes. Wang Gong Gong halted and said with a smile, Your Highness will know by asking His Highness. Lately, Wang Shi has gotten even better at understanding his master and acting accordingly. As soon as the master returned, Wang Gong Gong would immediately grab the little masters and leave. Tian Shi, you're the crown prince now. Li Yu became happy as soon as he saw Hubby. Cupping his stomach, he walked over delightedly. His lower abdomen has started to bulge faintly. Whenever Mu Tian Chi saw him walk, he'd worry and hastily have him stop. Walking over with big strides himself, he supported Li Yu with a hand and let him casually lean against him. Your Highness the Crown Prince. Li Yu smugly winked at him. Mu Tian Chi was a bit reserved at first. However, Xiao Yu's lively manner made him want to laugh. Being made the crown prince was a huge step forward. He was very self-aware however and knew that without Xiao Yu, he would have probably still been a mute Wang Jai right now. Who knew who would have been appointed to this crown prince position instead? Xiao Yu, it's all thanks to you. Really, thank you very much. Jing Wang said. The thing that he thought about most during the morning court session was this. Hmm, hmm. Are you being modest right now? I already heard from Wang Shi. Congratulations, your highness. I also heard that imperial father-in-law wants to set up a wedding ceremony for us. Li Yu recalled the size of the wedding ceremony at the West Frontier, with the huge crowd of people all over. Immediately, it made him feel panicky inside. 
Jing Wang thought Li Yu was dissatisfied and nervously held his hands, since it will be inconvenienced for your health, I didn't agree. Do you feel like I'm neglecting you here? Really? Why would I? Li Yu laughed. He was only thinking about it but Jing Wang actually declined for real. He was really worthy of being the man he fell in love with. Even when refusing something, they were telepathically connected. Li Yu was just praising his man non-stop to himself, praising him delightedly when his husband continued, I already discussed with father. It wouldn't be too late to do it after you finish giving birth and had recuperated enough. I wouldn't allow you to feel wronged. Jing Wang looked towards Li Yu and promised with an extremely satisfied smile. Li Yu. A wedding would still be held after he finished giving birth? What kind of refusal was this? The princess of Jinju had said that after giving birth, she felt like an emptied out cloth bag. He was really terrified of getting married to hubby feeling like a cloth bag. Li Yu felt embarrassed but seeing Jing Wang's expression, it seemed that Jing Wang liked the idea a lot. After all, they could consummate their marriage once again. Forget it. Since the hubby liked it, then they could discuss it later. Wasn't it just sharing the wedding wine? Wasn't it just red bed sheets and blankets? Wasn't it just wearing wedding outfits again? He was very familiar with the wedding play already. If worse comes to worse, he could just lose some weight after giving birth. Touching his not even very meaty waist, Li Yu slowly gained some anticipation towards this wedding ceremony. Li Yu's reaction towards his hubby turning into the crown prince seemed pretty normal. The crown prince himself felt that his crown princess consort was really very calm about this. He was indeed worthy of being a Carpio. Who knew that in the middle of that same night, a situation would occur. The soundly asleep and snoring fish woke up several times and shook the hubby awake a number of times, asking impatiently, Tian Chi, did you really become the crown prince? Mu Tian Chi nodded, losing track of how many times he had nodded his head by now. Patting Li Yu's back, he embraced him. So this fish wasn't actually calm at all. Instead, his reaction was just very, very delayed. Li pregnant once, stupid for three years you was so happy he could fly. My hubby is the crown prince ah ha ha ha. End chapter. The Disabled Tyrant's Beloved Petfish Transmigration Chapter 139 After Jing Wang became the crown prince, Li Yu was also bestowed the title of crown princess consort. In this ancient era, Li Yu's birth background was basically nothing. Originally, he should have received a lot of criticism due to this. The crown prince even made preparations to rebuke right back on the spot if anyone made any objections towards his crown princess consort. Unexpectedly, none of the officials said anything about it. This wasn't actually because there wasn't anyone who wanted the position of the crown princess consort. After all, the crown princess consort would be elevated to the position of the empress once the crown prince ascended the throne. If there was a possibility, who didn't want to strive for it? However, despite everything that these people did up until now, the Jing couple still had a great relationship. Jing Wang didn't take any secondary consort. Not only that, he didn't even have any concubines. The emperor was clearly just letting Jing Wang do whatever he wanted. Now that Jing Wang had become the crown prince, if they rashly went to fight for the crown princess consort position, would they even manage to obtain it like that? If they angered the crown prince, it wouldn't be worth it at all. Political marriage was a union to make connections, not to make enemies. Although Li Yu's lack of birth background was a negative for him, this person already had four sons and all four were loved by the emperor. The emperor bestowed them nobility status as soon as they were born and even held the children often on his knees. It was clear how much he had favored and pampered them. If someone fantasized about becoming the crown princess consort, wouldn't they have to offend these little royal grandsons as well? None of the officials dared. Therefore, no one dared to protest against the imperial decree granting Li Yu the title of the crown princess consort. 
the position of the crown princess consort was settled just like this. The crown prince originally lived in the Jing estate. The emperor had planned to make the crown prince move into the imperial palace. However, the crown prince said that his current residence was adequate enough, there's no need to make all the hassle. The emperor recalled that crown princess consort also had a big stomach right now. Moving to the imperial palace was indeed not very convenient. There were also no regulations requiring the crown prince to live inside the imperial palace either. Therefore, the emperor listened to the crown prince's words and changed the name of the Jing estate into the crown prince's estate. The crown prince couple might still live there. The imperial guards would be increased though, in accordance to his position of the crown prince. The emperor finished proclaiming Jing Wang as the crown prince and felt very satisfied in his heart. However, he discovered something immediately afterwards. De Bao was originally Jing Wang's heir. Now that Jing Wang had become the crown prince, De Bao's heir apparent position was also gone. Although being the son of the crown prince was far better than being the son of a Wan Jai, the other boys all had nobility statuses. De Bao didn't. The emperor obstinately believed that De Bao was experiencing an injustice here. With a wave of his hand, the emperor separately supplemented De Bao's nobility status with a third rank cavalry commander nobility position. Originally, the emperor had planned to bestow the title of Wang. Giving De Bao the crown prince's previous position was only an idle musing that he had spoken to Lodo Ruiz Hung about. But it scared head steward Lodo so much that his legs turned limp. He hastily persuaded the emperor over and over. The emperor finally changed his mind and reluctantly picked the cavalry commander position. Even with this, the emperor still felt like it was being unfair to De Bao. When Li Yu received the imperial decree, the corner of his mouth twitched non-stop. He thought that this wasn't so bad. He had been really afraid that the emperor would lose his head in pampering De Bao and gave him the title of crown imperial grandson or something. Luckily, the emperor still had a thread of sense left. De Bao was also an extremely fortunate fish baby. His life had been unbelievably good immediately after birth. He even managed to conquer his grandpa for his father. A baby, who wasn't even two years old yet, actually had a third rank nobility position. Wasn't this like he's living life with a cheat code? Just take a look at who was the real Koi in their family. Clearly it was De Bao. After accepting the title, they needed to enter the imperial palace to thank the emperor. Li Yu got ready and prepared to leave the estate. Usually, he didn't head outside much. After being pregnant, he became even more careful. However, there's no avoiding going to the imperial palace this time. Li Yu had ordered someone to send a message to his crown prince hubby bright and early in the morning to let him know ahead of time. He even brought the crystal bottle, carrying the fish body double inside. The emperor gave him the title of the best fish in the realm. He had to thank the emperor for this as well, along the way. Wang Shi planned to personally accompany Li Yu to enter the palace. Presently, crown princess consort's health was extremely important. Wang Shi specifically picked a round-faced maid that knew both martial arts and medicine to follow Li Yu around without leaving for even a second. Over here, they were just about to depart from the estate. However, a message came from the crown prince first, saying that the crown princess consort needed to wait a moment inside the estate. The eunuch transmitting the information only received this unclear message. Although Li Yu thought it was strange, he still did what hubby said and halted his plans to enter the palace temporarily. After waiting for not even one incense stick of time, the crown prince rushed back to the estate on a fast horse. How come you came back? Li Yu was surprised at first. Then he asked his hubby with a smile. I came to bring you into the imperial palace. The crown prince replied with a smile back. You don't have to. Making it so troublesome, Although Li Yu was grumbling verbally, his mouth was split into a wide grin. The classic case of saying no, when meaning yes. Who wouldn't like their other half to be thinking about them constantly? At the hunting festival before, Jing Wang also personally brought him all over the place. 
he was already the crown prince now but this habit still remained unchanged. In these last few days, the crown prince has been terribly busy at the Ministry of Rights. However, because Li Yu was about to enter the imperial palace, he specifically rushed back to the estate. This, wouldn't being absent at work affect you. Li Yu was happy to have Hubby here with him but he also knew that Hubby would be criticized if he wasn't careful. The crown prince smiled easily. It won't. I've already asked the minister of rights for a leave from work. Since he already asked for leave, then it was fine. Li Yu nodded in confusion. He felt that this minister seemed to be very considerate of his subordinates. He completely didn't realize that with the current status of his husband, even if he didn't ask for leave, no one in the Ministry of Rights would dare to stop him. Since the Crown Prince had specifically rushed back, he left the estate together with the Crown Princess Consort. Crown Princess Consort was pregnant, so he was not suited to ride a horse. The Crown Prince had returned on a swift horse. In order to bring Crown Princess Consort into the palace, he shared a carriage with Crown Princess Consort instead. The carriage advanced extremely slowly. By the time that they had reached the palace gates, Crown Princess Consort had already taken a comfortable nap in the Crown Prince's arms. We're here already. So fast, before Li Yu had felt that there was some distance between home and the Imperial Palace. This time, the time seemed to flew by so quickly. Wang Shi, who was following the carriage, desperately suppressed his laughter. Whether it was really fast or not, only His Highness understood this best. The Crown Prince helped Li Yu get off the carriage. Head Steward Luo and an attendant were waiting at the palace gates already. Seeing the Crown Prince, they hastily came over to greet them and guide the Crown Prince and his entourage to Ganqing Palace. Because of the inconvenience due to the Crown Princess Consort's condition, the personal servant specifically got a soft sedan ready for the Crown Princess Consort. The Crown Prince gave the sedan a look and then shook his head. He ordered Wang Shi to bring over the little sedan that they had carried over from the estate. Li Yu. When did Hubby prepare this? How come he didn't know? However, since there was a sedan to sit in, he didn't need to walk. The indolent fish immediately sat inside. He thought the crown prince would sit together with him again and promptly patted the space to his side, wanting the crown prince to come in as well. However, the crown prince didn't actually move. The sedan was not as large as a carriage. The crown prince was afraid of crowding Li Yu so he didn't enter. Instead, he lifted the left and right window curtains. This way, it wouldn't be stuffy inside and he could also see this fish anytime. After the crown princess consort settled in, eight servants from the crown prince's estate were responsible for lifting the sedan. They set off with the crown prince following beside the sedan. The personal servant had heard of the crown prince and crown princess consort's public displays of affections before. He never thought that by just inviting the crown princess consort into a sedan, he would be smacked in the face by a warm bowl of dog food. He didn't need to follow the crown prince. Therefore, the personal servant returned to Ganqing Palace first to inform the emperor. The speed of the sedan wasn't very quick. There were no issues along the way so Li Yu looked at the scenery outside along the way. When they traveled near the imperial gardens, Li Yu suddenly saw a ball of white color under a shrubbery. Heart skipping, Li Yu hastily said, wait a second. The crown prince quickly ordered the servants carrying the sedan to stop and look towards Li Yu. Li Yu said, that ball of white. Did he see wrong? He kind of thought it looked a bit like Piao Shui. Last time when he delivered the tiger seal, Piao Shui had helped him distract and lead away the guards. After what happened, Li Yu had Wang Shi make some inquiries. Piao Shui didn't get caught by the guards at that time. The guards thought it was a wild cat so they didn't go to the cold palace in search of it. Later on, there was that chaotic battle at Ganqing Palace. However, in comparison, the state of the cold palace was rather peaceful. Piao Shui wasn't injured because of him. Li Yu was happy to learn that. However, 
the crown prince and concubine Chu's son, the Marquis of An, were enemies. So Li Yu couldn't express it too much. Therefore, Li Yu entrusted Wang Gonggong to indirectly deliver a bag of small dried fish to Piao Shui as a gift of thanks. Although he didn't clearly order Wang Gonggong to do anything else, the personal servant from the cold palace learned that Wang Gonggong from the crown prince's estate valued this cat a lot and didn't dare to bully Piao Shui. Because of this, concubine Chu's days became better. Li Yu didn't hide this matter relating to Piao Shui from the crown prince. Instead, he voluntarily let the other know about it. The crown prince understood his personality very well. Xiao Yu was very kind-hearted and always returned favors. Even if the other was a cat, he'd do his best to repay the favor. The crown prince knew that Li Yu was well aware of what's appropriate and continued to trust in him as before. This time, while entering the palace, Li Yu also had Wang Shi bring some little dried fish, thinking if he happened to see Piao Shui, he'd feed it. Perhaps because of this, he had Piao Shui in his thoughts. Now, seeing a white ball while passing the imperial gardens, he subconsciously connected it with Piao Shui. The crown prince followed Li Yu's line of sight up to that ball of white. He ordered the round-faced maid, Xiao Luo, to go look. After Xiao Luo went over, she came back holding a white cat. Because this cat hasn't been inspected yet, Xiao Luo didn't dare to walk too close. At a few steps away distance, she let the crown princess consort take a look at it. Li Yu looked. It was Piao Shui no doubt. This must be some kind of fate. What's wrong with it? Why was it hiding in a shrubbery? Xiao Luo held up Piao Shui and examined it carefully. Piao Shui was very clean, without any dirt or filth. However, there was a smell of blood on it. Xiao Luo sniffed and inspected Piao Shui's body. She discovered that one of Piao Shui's back legs was wrapped up in heavy bandages. The bandages were covered with blood. It's injured. Xiao Luo said clearly. Wang Shi took the initiative to step forth and test the cat's fur with his silver needle. The needle didn't change color. Wang Shi looked questioningly towards the crown prince, not knowing what decision the crown prince would make. Normally, an inspection was enough. After hearing that Piao Shui was injured, Li Yu felt somewhat worried. He also looked pitifully towards the crown prince. The crown prince. The crown prince's heart was tickled from being observed by fishes pleading round black eyes. He turned his face and coughed softly, check again. There's nothing wrong with being cautious. The crown prince ordered Xiao Luo to hold Piao Shui, not allowing her to come close. He went over himself to inspect Piao Shui personally. Seeing the crown prince, Piao Shui suddenly started howling tragically. It bit the bandage around its leg for a bit. The blood on the bandage spread rapidly. Because of this, the crown prince noticed the injury on Piao Shui. Thinking for a moment, he said to Xiao Luo, unwrap it. Xiao Luo carried a wound ointment with her. If there was something wrong with the injury, she could apply medicine for Piao Shui to use. With the crown prince's order, Xiao Luo didn't dare to hesitate. She immediately unwrapped the bandage. Under the bandage, a bloody red rolled up towel fell out. Xiao Luo thought it was strange. Under a careful examination, she noticed that although there was blood on Piao Shui's leg, there weren't any wounds. The blood should have come from the rolled up towel. This maid had made a mistake. Xiao Luo hastily knelt down and asked for forgiveness. What's the matter? Li Yu was still in the sedan. He suddenly saw Xiao Luo kneel and felt somewhat surprised. It's nothing. She's wrapping the bandages for the cat right now. Don't worry. The crown prince's face expression fell. Piao Shui wasn't injured but it was wrapped up in bandages, which made people think the cat was injured there was definitely an issue with the thing hidden inside the bandage. At that moment, the crown prince thought about a lot of things. However, he was afraid of frightening this fish. Therefore, he maintained his gentle and steady voice. With this explanation from him, 
Abruptly you relaxed and remain seated and waiting. The crown prince gave Wang Shi a look. Wang Shi hastily pulled Xiao Luo up. The two people carried Biao Shui and walked far, taking off the bandages and balled up towel. They have already verified. The reason why blood seeped continuously was because of this balled up towel. Wang Shi has seen plenty of sinister acts and understood that there was definitely something wrong with this balled up towel. If someone unaware got near Biao Shui, they would have most likely touched the thing inside the balled up towel. Xiao Luo wrapped her hand with a handkerchief and opened the balled up towel. There was even more fresh blood inside. This blood smelled extremely repulsive. Xiao Luo hastily covered her nose, what is this? Wang Shi was the senior here and has seen many things. After looking at it carefully, he said to the crown prince, Your Highness, this isn't human blood. To this old servant, this seems to smell like dog blood or chicken blood. The crown prince, what is it used for? Wang Shi explained, it said that common folks sometimes would pour dog blood, chicken blood, and such things to expel evil spirits. Especially the blood of a black dog. Evil spirits. The crown prince has never heard of this thing before. To wrap something in such a sinister manner inside bandages was used to expel evil spirits. Wang Shi said, that's right. It's to expel evil spirits and Yao. It was said that if Yao touched this kind of dirty blood, they would immediately change back to their original forms in front of everyone. Expel Yao. Change back to their original forms. The crown prince's expression changed abruptly. He raised his head and looked towards the direction of Xiao Yu, who was waiting in the sedan. He knew Wan Yao by his side. If they hadn't discovered this thing beforehand, Xiao Yu would have most likely touched Biao Shui and end up touching this balled up towel as well. Then what would have happened? A voice said in his heart, he would change back to his original form in front of everyone. Xiao Yu's original form was a fish. He had thought it was strange from the beginning. Why would a cat that was raised inside the cold palace have something like this wrapped around its body? Furthermore, it even appeared on the road that they had to travel past to get to Ganqing Palace. Most likely, someone knew about Xiao Yu's true identity and wanted to hurt Xiao Yu. End chapter.